Hello everyone, it's Paolo Margari from Ultra Digital. I'm based in Brussels, Belgium. Today, I'm going to talk about how to enhance your social media data set to build insightful KPIs. So we talk about social media, mostly organic posting, and uh, the focus will be on LinkedIn. So let's see what we're going to learn from this speech. Um, first of all, a question for you. Do you post on LinkedIn organically? I mean, for your company, on your company page, to promote a business? Or if not on LinkedIn, do you post on other social media channels still as a company, for example, Facebook page or Twitter? Well, this post is for you. This presentation is for you. And we are going to understand what works better in terms of LinkedIn organic posting. So we don't want just to find out the basic metrics, but we are going to uh, learn from other uh, metrics that we're going to add, uh, true dimensions that we're going to add in order to find, to build meaningful KPIs, meaningful and actionable KPIs. And also uh, we are going to visualize them and not only building, but also visualize them on a dashboard. So we see also how uh, we can build this dashboard to bring actionable insights uh, after your social media campaigns organically. And uh, a little background by myself, I'm a director of Old Regional. It's a small boutique digital marketing agency uh, based in Brussels, but serving mostly small and medium uh, enterprises uh, in Europe, uh, also professionals. And uh, as a background, I've been working in digital marketing for 15 years. Uh, my uh, background has been as an employee for the British Council, but I've been also serving as a consultant for other companies uh, like Manpower Group, Swift, but also small companies and professionals as well. And I have uh, some certifications like Google Advertising, Facebook Advertising and uh, UX. And also as a background, I have a PhD in Economic Geography, which is not strictly related to that, but it's still very helpful to understand data and to analyze data in a, a critic way, let's say. So going beyond the surface of what we observe. So I would like to start with a quote which I really like, uh, because I think uh, this should be the foundation of what uh, we're going to do in our analytics uh, process. And first of all, uh, I don't know if you are aware about the uh, so-called Occam razor. Uh, it's uh, pretty well known uh, about scientists. So say entities should not be multiplied without necessity. So basically it means that you don't have to add complexity when it's not needed. Why? Because complexity uh, means waste of time and also means a bad understanding by your audience. Uh, if your audience is uh, are board members or content marketers which are not into data much, uh, probably they will not get what you mean. So try to get simple and also save time, which is also saving money, something that your client or your uh, boss likes. And so what are the core principles uh, for uh, getting better results? I would say analytics should be, first of all, the foundation of any digital marketeer. Unfortunately, this is not true in all the cases. Sometimes digital marketeers are just focused on the creative aspect of their job, which is fine, but they don't really focus on analytics, which is understanding what they do and also uh, recognizing mistakes from what they can learn. Then uh, simplify. This is going back to the uh, Occam razor. So cut off what is irrelevant. Uh, not only uh, KPIs, but also reports, also meetings, also calls, slides, whatever is not relevant for your audience is not necessary. So keep it simple and move from meaningless KPIs to meaningful KPIs. We're going to see today how we can uh, actually enrich the data with something that are really, really relevant for us. And we avoid talking about things which are not relevant, which are there, but we don't really need to spend time for them. And uh, go beyond the standard metrics because everyone can download uh, reports from the platforms like LinkedIn and uh, they can analyze what is there. But if you want to get extra knowledge, if you want to differentiate your, yourself from your competitors, then you have to uh, build the metrics in order to uh, get some insights which are normally not there. And then uh, beating competitors is also not only something in terms of product, in terms of sales, but also in terms of knowledge. That's the foundation for success in the long term. And then also the fact that you have to test, track, observe, learn from mistakes is another part of your job. Don't think you are the best in doing what you do, even though you are successful, because actually there could be always things to learn. And it's better to learn from what doesn't work than from what works, because actually there is the opportunity right? 
So if you're starting for meaningful KPIs, we're going to start checking what could be this uh, extra LinkedIn insights to gain. I will start with the type of content. We know that, for example, LinkedIn page, now we can post uh, many different uh, media, like video, slides, uh, links, memes, uh, infographics. Video could be uh, from YouTube, for example, it could be also published natively. And we want to see how they perform, right? Because we don't trust what we read, uh, what we read around, but we want to actually check if it's valid for our page, for our audience, for our products. And so other type of metrics we can uh, uh, get is like the type of product. We may say we have 10, 10 different products or thousand. We have different services like uh, as an agency, probably you offer SEO and uh, advertising. You want to see what kind of product is more successful, not just from the post, but also from the type of uh, product you're focusing in the post. And then the content length. There are many so-called experts in social media. They say the content should be short, should be long, should be 300 words, should be like uh, three sentences or the number of hashtags. These are all information that you want to track in order to understand what is working for you. And you go beyond what is generally shared by a post on a blog, which is actually applied by many people. You don't see it if you don't first learn from your experience. Other aspect very important is the funnel stage. When you post on social, sometimes uh, I see many companies are focusing on the very uh, late part of the funnel, like they want to drive sales, but they never focus on the awareness part. They never focus on the engagement part, uh, talking to people that already know what you do, but they don't really want to buy anything yet, or talking to people that don't even know what you offer and they may have a need but they don't want to hear about your solution they want to hear about the need they have so these are the different funnel stages that you can track only when you categorize your post with some relevant dimensions some relevant variables another aspect is the tone of voice some companies have a standard tone of voice because they have actually a plan in place there's a good content marketing team some other companies they don't so they're random some other companies they just copy what is there so you want to understand what kind of tone of voice work for your audience. If your audience is made by, let's say, board members, probably they're more formal. But could be many young people there as well, they prefer a more informal tone of voice. And it's important to understand also what generate shares and because it increases the organic reach, which is a very important metric to track as well. So you will not get this information through standard reports, at least on LinkedIn, but also on other platforms as well. So you have to enrich your data set in order to get this information. We see how we are going to do it. These are the ingredients you need. First of all, you need a social media platform. In this case, we are talking about LinkedIn, but you can also use others. And then you need a, a tool in order to work on the data, on the data set. And I'm using Google Sheets. Why? Because it's free, it's accessible by many people, and actually can be linked very easily to the next tool which is like Google Data Studio, which again is free, is constantly evolving. But in this case, you can also use other BI platforms like uh, Tableau, for example, if you think it's more suitable, if you have the right skills to use it. Data Studio is pretty simple to use and uh, it's quite immediate. Then other aspect ingredients is people, people, your stakeholders. It's not only the board members, your clients, it's also people that work on content because they are the ones that actually creating the content and they have the one that have to learn from uh, your results you're going to present them from the actionable meaningful KPIs we are going to build. So involve people, disseminate to them, make them feel part of what you say, what you do. Otherwise they will see the report as just like a waste of time. They say, okay, this shows something, I'm doing well, I'm doing not well, I don't, I don't care. They have to know that the report, the dashboard is an ele important element of their work because they have to base their actions, the future actions, on your findings. And these tools are free. Well, it's not 100% free because you have to invest time, but I'm saying invest time, not waste time, because when you reach actionable, meaningful KPIs, time is not wasted, but it's invested because you base, you create the foundations for better results in the future. So what is the receipt? We saw the ingredients, and now we are going to check at the receipt. So first of all, we need to extract, extract the raw data from social media platforms. We are going to do it from LinkedIn in this case. Then we need to import this data into Google Sheets, which is very easy. It's just a file. 
and then we are going to define the goals. So we have to build a meaningful measurement plan according to what you want to measure. Sometimes, you know, this come back, the open razor. Don't uh, build measurement plan with KPIs that you don't care or they're not relevant because maybe they're, they're not uh, important for what you do. If, let's say, you post always only video, but probably you don't need the type of content. I advise not to post only one type of media, but if you do, then probably you don't need to differentiate between type of content. Uh, so you just have to focus on what you want to learn. Sometimes it's good to extract the data and see what kind of information you want to get out of this data. The good point is that this exercise is also retroactive in the sense that you can extract data from previous posts and you can categorize them still. So you can learn from previous action. It's not something that you start today and it's only valid for the future, but you actually you can learn from the past as well. And then you have to enrich the data set by adding to each post the relevant variable according to the plan you want to, uh, you, you want to implement. So according to the KPIs you want to build, you add the variables that are relevant to build that KPI. And then you link this uh, you know, enriched data set to Data Studio, and finally you can visualize the data and you can take action. So you can analyze, learn, disseminate with the internal stakeholders and take action to improve the results or to avoid what is not working. So let's see how we extract data. First of all, you go on a LinkedIn page, you go on a back office, and you select the time you want to extract data. And you get just an XLS file that later you can import on your uh, Google Sheet. Then uh, later you see this, and as you can see, I create some custom predefined categories, which are not there normally. So they are the ones in blue at the, on the right-hand side. And as you can see, I create product tag, length, which is automatic, you can calculate it, and stage of the funnel and tone of voice. In this case, you have to uh, be consistent and also sometimes there's kind of subjectivity in uh, assigning a post to a specific category. I know this is not easy, but you have to know already this kind of post is uh, considered, for example, neutral in terms of tone of voice or aggressive or fun, and also in terms of product tag. There could be a post that, for example, talk about multiple products. So in this case, you can create a category called multiple products or a post that doesn't talk about any product and say, okay, no product here. So, you know, you have to be flexible. It's up to you. You define your uh, variables according to what you want to measure. And uh, the length, for example, instead of using a number, uh, like an absolute number, you can create ranges. Let's say up to 100 words or up to 100 characters and between 100 and 200, so it's up to you. I think it's better this way, but you can still, you know, uh, just measure the, you know, the, the pure number and even later calculate average. So you see a curve where you see the most performing post, for example, are the one around 300 words. And so in this case, you can create a correlation between click rate and content length. This is something more advanced you can do only after you enrich the post with this information. And here, see, uh, let's have a look at what you will get on Google Data Studio. So first you build this, you export the data, you know, you build this on Google Sheets, and then you see what we get on Google Data Studio. You get a tidy dashboard like this. I build it for my clients, and as you can see, this is focusing on the stage of a funnel. We have four stages here. We decide to have four stages, but it could be more according to what you want to measure. As you can see, there's a, a evaluation, awareness, conver uh, conver and conversion, and nurturing, which is what comes uh, at the very end after a client is already client, and you want them to expand, uh, you know, to disseminate your uh, your brand, actually. You want them to engage with your brand. I think it's very important, but very, very few companies focus on that. Many uh, companies post more about evaluation, which is fine. It's about evaluating a product. But uh, I will see that actually awareness is the most important because you want to get extra clients. So you have to make them aware about what you do. You have to make them aware about what's going on in the industry. So this way you position yourself also as a, a thought leader in the industry. So you can see the difference here between the number of posts about a specific stage of the funnel. So you see in this case, in this time range, we had a lot of posts about evaluation and uh, the performance in terms of click rate. As you can see, the best uh, performance was made by nurturing posts. So the ones actually we expect, you know, because they are already uh, talking the language of a client, which is already hopefully happy with your brand, so they are more willing to share. But uh, uh, you can see that in this case, there's a big discrepancy between uh, 
evaluation and nurturing. So you have to work on the content in order to balance it, because otherwise it means that you are posting a lot about things that people don't share or don't like. And let's see a different visualization here, which is not focusing uh, on the uh, final stage, but is focusing on the product. As you can see, I've been using uh, artificial products, which are not matching my clients. So I've been using food. Uh, so you see like uh, soup, coffee, beer, but actually uh, there are real products behind these names. And you can see uh, the company was posting a lot about the first product, soup, uh, a lot of posts, but in terms of click through rate, is not the first. So the first is like another one. And you can understand uh, that clearly there's a discrepancy between what the company wants to push in social and what people like to share on social, so or like to engage with on social. So again, this is another important thing to learn. And um, let's see how you build it. So this is Data Studio. Uh, it's like a, um, the, the tool through which you can build the table or any graphic there. And uh, in addition to the standard uh, metrics coming from LinkedIn, in this case, you can find also your metrics, your dimensions, which in this case is product tag, uh, you can find also others. And so the more metrics you add there, the more you find, the more information you can get, the more KPIs you can build. That's why I say don't add a lot of dimensions if they're not relevant, because it takes time, but just add the ones that are relevant for your business. And so let's have a look also, uh, an important warning. You have to watch out the fact that sometimes a high engagement rate on social doesn't always mean success in terms of business. Why? Uh, because you no, know, it's always good because it increases the organic reach, which is a social reach. On, but it's not always good in terms of business because sometimes you can have a lot of comments, but they could be negative. So you have to uh, monitor, reply, or hide or delete if it's the case. You can also have a lot of clicks, but sometimes you get clicks for posts that involve, let's say, a gallery with images from an event. So people want to click because they want to see people there. They want to see their colleagues. They want to see themselves. And so, the, you know, if you have a high click rate, doesn't always mean that the post is successful. So this is good also to understand uh, and to exclude from your analysis the posts that are tricky, let's say, because they are not showing success, but actually they are showing something which is not relevant, like uh, many clicks for a photo gallery, for example, or something negative, a lot of comments. Uh, which are like uh, angry customers, I don't know, or people that are, don't like something that you post that is uh, political, for example, whatever. And uh, also clicks to links, you don't have to check also only the click to rate, but also check what happened. And on Google Analytics, because sometimes you drive a lot of traffic from LinkedIn, but there's a very high bounce rate. So two other things here, or three. First of all, you are targeting the wrong people. Or oh, the message on social is not, uh, matching what people find on the page. So in this case, you have to wor work on the target audience in the first case, and there's a little targeting opportunity on organic as well, for example, the language. And second, you have also to work on the page itself, like improving the uh, customer journey or improving the, uh, the page itself, working on UX, or, uh, you know, so this is all about conversion rate optimization, or uh, maybe, you know, posting about something different, uh, you know, adding some consistent image to match what they find on social also on the page. If the page is too much salesy, let's say, and the post is more kind of awareness one, of course people will abandon it immediately because they see there's nothing there for them for what, from what they expect. And uh, something else, the video views. Sometimes people focus on the video views only, but they don't consider a very important metric, which is like uh, the uh, completion rate. So sometimes many videos are there a lot of people start to watch them, but they abandon immediately. So it means that they are boring or they are not relevant. Uh, so you have to work on that as well with the team making the video and the shares as well. If you run an ambassador campaign, you invite your colleagues or uh, people already in the ambassador program to share a post. Of course, you know, the number of shares would be normally higher, uh, but uh, doesn't mean that strangers are willing to share your post. So you have to check also what kind of target audience is there, what kind of message you are sharing. So I don't want to uh, go beyond. Uh, we are right, uh, we reach the limit. So if you have any question, you know how to approach me. There is a, a LinkedIn group, so you can ask questions there. And uh, for anything, you can also get in touch with me. My name is Paolo Margari. You can visit my website, paolomargari.eu, 
or you can follow me on LinkedIn. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter, on Facebook, and I hope to hear from you. I, I say thank you to you for attending this and thank you to the organizers of the European Digital Week for attending this great event. I hope you find it interesting and I wish you great success with uh, a rich uh, dashboard that you're going to build with this methodology. Thank you so much and um, see you at some point. Bye.